Um, so, um, so the presentation is for um, digitalizing the dissertation uh, process. And uh, I am the Sri Yogana, uh, Associate Director of Student and Academic Support System Group at ITS. And myself, Deepa Thomas, I'm a Business System Analyst with ITS. So today we are going to present the, uh, the right now, and we just want to give the thought process of how to be digitalized in the future. So before we get into the details of the presentation, I want to know, and most of our is here are all our group. <laughs> uh, how many are PhD students here? Okay. Um, how many are from the registrar's office? <laughs> so. Um, you know, the system really will help the registrar's office as well. So, PhD, because PhD students like to be streamlined with the, all the manning process that they do today, will be streamlined with this process. And then, um, are there any library from library? No. Uh, again, libraries involved here too, where uh, at the end the dissertations are archived in the library system. So, getting started with the agenda topic. I have to do that. <laughs> So we can use the okay. So starting with the agenda. So first thing is the icebreaker. So we have some facts. So we have an icebreaker session. We'll come to that one. So we'll be asking some questions, so if you know the answers, just put your hands up, we have goodies for you. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the manual processes. So there are some manual processes in this dissertation. So we'll be explaining, just giving like an overview of what our manual processes are included. And the next one is the current flow. So the current flow of the whole DPR process, like where are we starting with, what, where, where will the PhD students start with? When they admit, when they are getting admitted to candidacy, and when they will get the degree, so the whole flow of process will be included. Oh, I already saw, told about the admittance to candidacy. So there are certain requirements to get admitted to candidacy. We'll be explaining more about that. Then comes the manual submission of dissertation. Today at Yale, we don't have like a way to upload the dissertation electronically. We do it manually. We send it out to the readers and send it out to the final archival process as well. So we. will talk more about that. Then comes the petition and the degree committee and also the archival of dissertation. So we'll be talking more about in the coming slides. So can we start the icebreaker session? Okay. Okay, so the first question. Who is the Dean of Raja School of Arts and Science? Okay, Jamie. <laughs> okay. You, want you can take whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dean Lynn Pooley. So she is the Dean of Raja School of Arts and Science. And she was appointed in 2014. She was Professor of Genetics and the Director of BBS during that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next question is, how many total number of PhD grad students are enrolled in 2018-19? Do you have a rough estimated number of points? Of course. A choice. <laughs> choice. Um, <laughs> what? Two thousand. Close. Eight hundred. Fifteen hundred. Okay. So I think this is a winner. <laughs> Twenty-five hundred. Close. 2,760, uh, and every year it increases by two to three percent. So that's a uh, you know uh, the value added to this program. Okay, and next question: Which program has the highest number of PhD enrollments? Like which program? You know, programs like uh, uh, chemistry, history, economics, geography. You know, so all those programs. That's enrollments, not graduates. Either. It's enrollments. <laughs> PhD enrollments. Roughly. Yeah. Any other answers? Physics. 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 
I'm CBC. No. No. <laughs> so I think there is a winner, uh, at least the second one. Uh, the first program is chemistry. There are 190. Yeah. And the second one is what Leah has said. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just BBS. BBS. So it's 166. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, the next question, how many number of PhD students were awarded degrees this year? <coughs> Can you give the number? Rough estimate. They're in hundreds, but they're not in thousands, so that's a clue. <laughs> no. No. Somewhere close. Somewhere close. <laughs> I think we'll give it to this. Yeah. It has time so many times. So it's, it's 406 this year. So um, so there are two times in a year that a, a degree is awarded uh, in December and in May. So in December, there were around 150 of them were awarded the degree, and in uh, May, there were around 256. Okay. And next one is what is a dissertation embargo? Anybody know what a dissertation embargo is? See, this will be very helpful when you try after the session. I think some people will be changing their paths and trying to do PhDs. <laughs> <laughs> it will be helpful to know these terminologies. Yes. After acceptance of the publication. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's the answer. Yeah. So dissertation embargo is like it's restricted for a limited period. It's usually like one or two years, but they can keep more if they need. So there's a story too. Recently, we heard from the registrar's office. Can I share that that, that um, incident where uh, this dissertation was embargoed for a few years, and but the person who did the dissertation passed away or was no more. So now the policy becomes that we have to wait another 75 years to release that documentation. So it's a it's a process and policy there. Okay. So what is microfiche or microfilm? Okay. So are you still working in a library? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do do? So uh, microfilm is used was used to digitize old documents and newspapers or books. Um, and it's what you do is you put it inside a machine that it's like it's basically a whole film. You put it inside a machine, it's not a computer, you can see like the film as it goes. And you can go up to each page. So that's right. That's right. And uh, that's what we do currently. Um, we actually send the dissertation. Mm -hmm. So Barbara, can you explain a little bit in the lines of what you get sent to ProQuest and ProQuest um, Microfilms, they have, once they microfilm it, they send the microfilm in the unbound copy to the library, and then the library sends that unbound copy out to get hard copy. And if the library, if, the student, if somebody requests it, they send the microfilm to the library. Correct. Okay. We are trying to print copy and copy. Next is, can the dissertations be submitted in foreign languages? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you want to say something? Oh, yeah. no, we didn't get the. Oh, oh, can you just <laughs> pass them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, departments like Spanish, Italian, French, so they can submit the dissertations in foreign languages. They don't need any approvals. But if it's like some other science programs, they need to get the approval from the deans, and only then they can publish it in foreign languages. Uh, the last question we have is. Uh, Name the two dissertation prizes that are given out in the GSAS. No. Uh, it's the Field and Porter uh, prizes. So um, the Theron Rockwell Field Prize is uh, given for poetic, literary, or religious work of scholarship, and the Johnson Edison John Edison um, Porter is given in the field, any field which is which it is possible through original effort to gather and relate facts or principles and to make the product of general human interest. So these are the two awards that are given uh, to the uh, PhD students. 
So uh, the main purpose of this presentation is to concentrate on the manual processes that we have currently. Um, so admittance to candidacy, which people will go into detail, where there are a set of forms that we need to digitalize. There's uh, the dissertation upload process, the electronic dissertation upload process that is given to the readers to review the dissertation and bring back the uh, reader's rating, uh, the report. And the third is uh, integration with the ProQuest vendor and uh, finally archiving in the, in the library. So these are the three main processes that we are concentrating in this presentation. Okay, so this is just to explain the flow of the whole dissertation process. So the graduate student starts it with admittance to candidacy. So generally during their third year, that's when they do the admittance to candidacy. There are like three or four forms involved, like they need to get the certifications to get admitted to candidacy. That is coming up in the next slide. So when that is done, that's when they officially begin the research activities for their dissertation. And like any PhD student, in order to seek like a PhD, what they have to do is they have to submit a dissertation. And only then they will be awarded with their degree. And that's why they are doing this dissertation. So don't allow, I hope you got the answer. You were asking me before what a dissertation is. And then what happens is uh, the dissertation is like it takes like more than six years to get completed. So every year, the graduate school needs to know, or the department needs to know, what is happening and what is the process of the dissertation. So we have an existing application today, which is called DPR, which is the Dissertation Progress Report. What happens there is, every year the student goes in and they have to report on what they are doing or what they did the last year. So it has a high level flow, where the student goes in, gives answer uh, to a set of questions, saying what they did and what they will be doing. This will be submitted to the advisor for his review. The advisor goes through the answers and he gives his comments. And this will be further submitted to the DGS, who is the director of graduate studies for that department. He can go through the student assessment as well as the advisor review. He gives away his comments and that's submitted for the year. And the student continues the same process for like six years generally. And when they're ready for degree petitioning, that's when no more DPR will be there. Like the every year progress report. Normally the graduate students, they petition for the degree during the sixth year, but there are certain cases when they get extended it to their seventh year or more, like eight years. Yeah, an example, like yeah, Korean. So tenth, yeah. <laughs> tenth year, somebody is doing the PhD, but dedicated to complete it within a year or two. And then uh, once they are ready to petition for the degree, that's when like uh, uh, there is another application that also exists today which is the ONOR or the online notification of readers that comes into place. So there is like a hand in hand process. The student has to let the department know that okay we are ready to do our, I mean come up with our dissertation. So now we are ready to petition for that. So during that process usually the department they go in and they assign readers to these students. And the readers has to go through the dissertation, give their ratings and that helps to get their degree. And for that, we use a system called ONOR. So we have an existing one, but we are like re redesigning that one. Um, and also, there should be minimum of like three readers and not more than five readers. It can be Yale faculty as well as non Yale faculty. It's just that they should be like a PhD person or something equivalent to that. Only then they can be a reader. Uh, so. Uh, in the ONOR system, the student or the department goes in, they assigns the readers, So, but the reader has to get this dissertation in order to go through that and give their ratings. Today we are doing that manually. So the student submits that to the registrar office and the registrar office send that, like they mail it to the reader. But the problem is that sometimes the dissertation, they go up to like 800 or 900 pages and just imagine they have like more than three or up to five readers. They have to take the printout of these 800 pages like five times. And the register office, they have to sort it out and send it out to the readers. This is like a very hectic process that's manual today. And in our new system, we'll be like upgrading it so that we can make it electronic. So if you go, uh, so there's like two times commencements in May and December. For May, they have a deadline for, uh, in mid-March. And for December, it's early October. So if you go to the registrar office during that time, you can see bundles of dissertations and boxes outside. So, right, Barbara? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and then, uh, okay, the, uh, the readers, so they get the manual dissertation, they give the ratings, they come back to our system and they can enter the ratings. And when that is done, they petition for the degree and it will be sent to a degree committee for reviewing. 
the student will be awarded the degree only when like the all the readers gives like positive feedbacks or positive ratings uh, and then the department has to like recommend them for the degree as well as they have to complete all the requirements for the dissertation and then the student gets the degree awarded and there's like a final part to this this dissertation has to be archived in our <coughs> library for that we use a system called proquest which is a vendor system and we send this again we do that manually we then send it manually to proquest and they do the binding and archiving and they make the microfilms which we discussed some time before and that's how it is archived in the library today anything to add here uh, barbara and Claudia? Wow. so that is the current process Agreeing to the admittance to candidacy. Yeah. So as I started, the admittance to candidacy can be said as like a first step in order to start this all the uh, the PhD process. So this includes like uh, three certifications. They have to get a qualifying examination certification. So like, what is a qualifying examination? So the student will be having like uh, exams in their uh, like in the major which they have taken, but they have to get some other exams like some general examinations for that particular major subject which they have taken or if there are any subordinate subjects whichever the department asks for they have to get it done and then they get a qualifying examination certification they have to submit a prospectus a prospectus is like it's a preliminary statement on what they will be doing in their dissertation it should include the topic of it shouldn't include all the details but it should include like what the topic of the dissertation is, what the working title is, and this will be submitted to the committee and will be approved. If so, they get a prospectus certification. Next comes the language proficiency. So this is not required by all the departments. There are just some departments who need this language proficiency certificate. Only those students have to get that. If all these three requirements are met, they are admitted to candidacy. And that's when they start like the official dissertation or the research progress by themselves. And then it's a way to like once they're admitted to candidacy and uh, the registrar's office knows about this a list of candidates to submit to candidacy, uh, candidacy then uh, the process starts from there where uh, each candidate who was admitted to candidacy gets a, a dissertation progress re review uh, report. So a report that they have to fill in at the end of that year to say what they have made progress in their research. So that's the dissertation progress review application that we have currently that is getting enhanced. Um. Okay, so as a continuation of DPR, as I said before, in the process flow, we go to the ONOR, which is the online notification of readers. As I said, we have a system today where the department goes in and the department are the one who assign the readers to the student. But there are certain departments who allow the student to do that as well. So the student can go in and pick the readers. And they submit it to the DGS or the Director of Graduate Studies for the department. Once it is approved, uh, the readers get the dissertation, like the hard copy of the dissertation from the Registrar Office. They go through that, give their read ratings, and um, the read how, the, how, do the, how do the readers get this um, ratings so it's like an email which is being sent out from our system if it's a Yale or non Yale it doesn't matter they get an email and they can come in and enter the ratings of the reader yeah. but as I said before we don't have like an electronic way of doing this this is like a tedious process so in the new system we are introducing we'll have like an upload process or an upload button where the student can upload the dissertation so in that way the register office can send that through electronically through the readers and they can get back to us as well. So um, so back in the previous slide we said that the uh, candidates will get the dissertation progress report every year, like they have to submit. And then eventually by end of that sixth year period they're all done with their research and they're ready to submit this dissertation and that's when the ONOR process comes in that Deepa explained. Um, the, the main thing which we are working on this is giving the ability for the student to upload the dissertation electronically into the system, which is crucial because then it solves some of the manual work uh, that the registrars and the student, you know, who has to make that five copies, if he has five, five readers to give that um, dissertation, he has to make five copies and imagine 800, that's what the example that Deepa said, 800, copy, uh, 800 pages and five copies is too many pages. So 
Um, so that's the uh, um, submission, electronic submission that we'll be working on. And uh, then, as we said, that once the dissertation is fully uh, vetted and we got the report from the readers, uh, the next step is for the degree committee to convene. They do uh, two times they meet in a year uh, uh, for the December uh, and the May commencement period. Uh, then the student must petition for their degree. It doesn't happen automatically. They have to do that and they have to also get the required recommendation for the department to get the, uh, get the uh, committee approved their dissertation. Once the, um, as we worked in the uh, flow, they have, uh, the committee has reviewed and approved the degree, um, um, I mean the dissertation, they get the degree awarded. So after the degree is awarded, again the registrar's office, uh, Barbara uh, works with the, all the dissertations out there and tries to send the finalized dissertation, approved dissertation and ships it to the ProQuest. Um, so, uh, ProQuest then scans the dissertation. Um, currently, even if it is a dissertation, it's a color copy. They get scanned with black and white. That's another concern we found. And um, so the electronic submission will solve that problem. And then uh, the other one is if there is a, um, the request is to put a binded, binded copy in the library, then a binded copy as well is printed by the ProQuest vendor. The library sends it out. Oh, the so request the gets into, okay, yeah. so it's through the library then. Yes. Uh, but then, uh, along with the soft copy, uh, ProQuest also does the microfilm, right? That gets shipped to the library. Um, so, uh, that's the overall process. So, there are three things that we are trying to do. That is the manual process which we talked about where uh, admis admittance to candidacy, where there are four manual forms that the student has to you know, write manually, give it to the DGS for approval, send it to the advisor for approval, because each student is now tied with different roles. The system is having many roles here to place with to get the degree awarded. One is uh, the whole department in which the student works. The uh, student itself is a role. The student is attached to advisor because the student has to work with the advisor for his dissertation. Finally, the advisor recommends that this is finalized and it, he, is, he should be moving forward. Uh, at the most, uh, a student can have uh, two programs, a uh, joint program, um, and he can have at the most two advisors advising him for his uh, dissertation. And then um, once the advisor gives the okay, it's next the director of graduate studies that they, they see the overall progress of the report and then they give the approval and at the end the deans as well goes go through the whole dissertation process and try to be in the co degree committee to approve their dissertation. So it's a whole life cycle of uh, a PhD candidate to get his degree um, and we are trying to see if we can help with the um, manual process, process to be digitalized um, seamlessly. So, and also to add that, so as I said, we have certain forms in order to get the student ad get admitted to candidacy. These are our manual forms today. The student has to go to the department, the department has to fill it up and they have to manually give it to the registrar office. So what we are planning is we are planning to make these forms paperless. So we have like a presentation going on in the other one, the Jill. So mm -hmm. we'll be doing it like paperless forms so that becomes easy for us as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What is Alice with uh, some of the dissertations more the research part? There's like also an ownership, I think the third part of research is done. And find by Dr. Gamble. Is there special authorization or, or uh, that um, or in, uh, station on the embargo part that you have to be very careful where to put it and how to protect it against the Yeah, so the protection, the embargo part only works in, uh, in the ProQuest system. Okay? okay? It doesn't work in the library system, right? Currently, we don't have any. That kind of restriction right now. Well, right? Not, yeah, yeah, we're not if there's an embargo. You do, you do. Okay, so. What is this? Can a student? Can somebody come into the library and see it? Or it's officially embargo now. Okay. So. No, we're just like the, even with the the, the digital part uh -huh. that where the. Uh, 
where it was hosted right. became a problem because the firm that hosted uh -huh. the, the space uh -huh. was compared to another group that financed the research, so they didn't want the dissertation to be yeah, hosted okay. by that other. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, do we have that? The student is using someone else's material. Um, they have to get permission from them. So usually, what they'll do is they will email them, and then they will submit those permissions to me, and I will include it with the um, paperwork for ProQuest. So currently, when they do do say that we want to embargo our dissertation, um, don't you just publicize the abstract of the dissertation? Just do you, do you yes, completely do embargo? Provide, um, as far as I know, there's no dissertation for everything restricted, but we do provide the metadata. Metadata. The catalog record. Okay. ProQuest does um, only have the abstract and title page when a dissertation is embargoed unless the student specifies that they don't want their abstract and title page listed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Good question. What is the uh, turnaround time for uh, submissions of final dissertation today? So it all depends on when they are choosing their uh, date, when they want to be uh, for the commencement, right? If it is December, uh, October is there? October 1st is for the December degree, and March 15th is for the May degree. Yeah, so there's no set timing on that, but if they want to complete their degree by December, they have to complete all their requirements by uh, early October uh, for December and mid-March for May. And the readers have 30 days to respond. Yeah, that's another thing. We have restrictions there. Yeah. <laughs> and what was the digitized also used for uh, plagiarism uh, checkups? Um, currently, that was not a requirement right now, but that could be something we have to look at. Like, uh, But I don't know if library does something with that. No. Yeah, so I that's know that um, with ProQuest, students can um, copyright through ProQuest, which is through the Library of Congress. And um, I know that they do look at everything in the student's dissertation oh, to see do. if it is um, someone else's work mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. haven't gotten permission for it. Mm -hmm. Because if, even if they do research and take somebody else's work, they have to cite it, right? Mm -hmm. right. They have to say that I've used this research program. So so on the technical side for paperless forms and when they submit <coughs> their dissertation, do we have an idea of the file size since we're talking 800 pages and how do we store it? Uh, how does that happen? So the dissertation wouldn't be uploaded through paperless forms, it would be more through our system. Um, so uh, the other topic which I didn't mention is that the dissertation progress review that we have today just for approval workflow. Uh, it doesn't have the uploading of dissertation and the ONOR is getting the reader's feedback uh, feedback through that system. We are actually merging both the system together as one system and then trying to give, we will give, not trying to, we will give uh, the student an upload capability within that system, that application that we are building. So all the manual independent forms that Deepa just mentioned will be paperless because they are lightweight but all the uploading part will be through this um, because there are checks and balances that we need to do before they upload they have to satisfy certain things which the DPR system has okay. so all that validations are there so uploading makes sense there oh the, the other cool part after after they do the upload in our system right um, and gets approved by all the degree committee and everything it will be registrar's office who will have the final list of all the dissertation files which they can say, oh, these are all finalized. We are working with ProQuest to see how we can streamline and push that files over to ProQuest so that manually we don't have to send the dissertations then. So that's the, I think, the biggest, um, I mean, one of the, um, uh, you know, manual process that will be uh, solved through this where we can just put it on their server and they can, with some standards, and then the student which, who has to complete after, after the degree is awarded, they have to do a set of, again, a manual list of forms that they have to submit, which ProQuest provides that forms, um, which we have recently um, launched for the last commencement uh, for the student to use. So those, uh, you know, graduate student exit survey form, uh, there are a few forms that they are already built in ProQuest. So, and ProQuest is also working on CAS single sign-on integration. So, you know, 
then it will be seamless for them to get into the new system, use the forms which are which they have to use to submit their dissertation, and dissertation will be just there in the server, which they have to just put it on their record. Right? Do we have any idea what the average file size? So file size again um, means electronically. Uh, did we ever get from Brookfest what the sizes of? Um, no. So I think we will test it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, whenever the student uploads their dissertation, how is the reader then going to access it? Is the plan to email the dissertation to the reader? Is the idea that the reader logs into a system is able to view but not download the dissertation? What are the so, um, we didn't talk about the requirements as such yet, but uh, that is the plan right now that we may give them, because you know it could be uh, Yale faculty or non-Yale. So for non-Yale, you have to do something different, give them a way to access the, uh, but the downloadable part, we have to see how that will work, because um, we didn't get to that, because it has to be protected, right? Uh, all that thing. Um, we need to discuss that in detail. So, because the other thing which we have to work in future, which will be the enhancement, is there will be versions of dissertations that you know. Because sure. after the reader reports back, you know they have to make major changes. Then the student has to upload it again. Now it's a second version, right? So, and the other uh, demand from the past was that reader could annotate inside the Apple, you know, dissertation itself to know, because otherwise they have to note the page number, the line number, and all those things. So, so we'll get there, but you know, initially it's just the manual process that we are trying to solve. Yeah. We're going to try to work with virtual control. Yes, oh, okay. so that's that's yeah. That's that becomes true. important because sometimes the reader has a question like, is there like any excessive editorial errors? And if the reader is saying yes, then the student is they cannot go to the PhD. They have to make changes to their dissertation that has to get approved again. Only then they that's can true. get it. So that becomes the yeah, whole the session sessions. starts then because it's a big editorial. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they flag and look for. Um, any other questions? Is there a timeline? Uh, timeline uh, for the initial uh, dissertation progress should be because there was some set of uh, um, for in the in the current application there are a set of things which were not working. So we are trying to get that solved first and roll out. So the Dissertation progress review or report uh, system is, you know, marking what they have achieved that year and then getting the approval from advisor and BGS and uh, getting to, you know, because advisors change during the year, right? So current system doesn't handle that very well. So we are trying to fix those things. So that portion will go first. So we are thinking in the next one month or so we'll roll that and then we'll be working on the ONR side of the things so of uploading dissertation and all those things. So it'll, it'll, within a year, we are hoping that this will be streamlined. Yes. 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 I have a follow-up question about this storing of the dissertation. What happens with, I'm not, uh, what happens with the dissertation after, um, uh, after the whole process is completed and is the dissertation still stored or what happens with that? So today, what happens, Barbara, with the manual copy that is submitted it's, to your office? Well, the um, unbound copy is sent um, to the library and then it's sent out to get hardbound. And I believe it's stuck in the library for a while. Um, yes, yeah. we, yes, we, we are part of it, so let's assume that we can that. Okay. And then the readers, when you send it to the readers, they have that copy. They don't send right. it back or anything. Right? Well, sometimes they do, and when they send it back to me, I send it back to the student. Okay, so the student gets back. But in the electronic world, we have to think about it, whether we need to archive it or put it in libraries, especially, you know, because now it's it's an electronic thing, right? So we didn't discuss about that, but that is an important thing that we'll be discussing. Ria, you have any questions? You clearly came to I understand. I work at the graduate school, and I will say, this is one of the most comprehensive presentations on this sort of topic that I've seen. I will have another two and a half years, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> well, um, we have a whole team here who's working together on this. Uh, so Claudia, Shauna, Emily, and Barbara in, in, in that office, in Registrar's office, and um, here Anton knows, has uh, um, supported ONOR. Um, we have other 
members of our group here who I think are in the other presentation because we equally divided our group here <laughs> to represent. <laughs> so they're in um, our colleagues' presentations on the other, group, uh, other side. Any other questions? Can, uh, I saw six year from the beginning to the end. Yes. Can that be done faster in research? So oh, yeah. 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 There's some students that you know, are done in four years. Four years? From start to finish. It's all same as sciences. They come in and do their research and you know, that's their, their dissertations are this big and the humanities are this big. You know, so that's <laughs> Yeah, one question, which is um, every institution that grants PhDs has the same problem. So to solve this from a technology perspective, are you thinking of designing entirely bespoke systems within ITS, or are you leveraging other technologies like? So we did some research on that side too. The deans did some research as well, the, as well as the registrar's office when they went to the IB Plus conferences. They don't have a system out there. And especially, probably, Yale does them differently too, with the advisors and DGSs as their different roles that they have to approve. So, Claudia, do you want to say something about it? Like, did you hear any other institutions that have this process? And so, most of the dissertations before the student submits it is already on the committee. So we're kind of the only one that they submit the dissertation, then it goes out. So that has. Few more steps than other, you know, they just submit the final, it's already approved, and then it just goes straight to purpose. So nobody's doing it the way we need to do it. Um, so. so that's, uh, so we are doing all uh, in, with an IT, a custom built application with the technology that we have, we are using in our group. So. I was just going to come I, I'm an alum of the graduate school and I'm a few years ago, and that was that point of how we're different in having the review after the final submission it does make it seem more appropriate. So I was wondering if there have been conversations about the timeline, because it basically does take up a whole semester of somebody's time when mm -hmm. they're sitting here being funded. But in, in my department, we actually had to do a defense, which had to be a month before we submitted to the graduate school. So we have to submit to our many students before the event, so that basically is the, the whole duration of the semester. Mm -hmm. um, and compared to peer institutions where you can submit, you can be working on it, working on it, working on it until the end of April, and then file it and defend it right then, and get to the mm -hmm. end it's mm -hmm. the whole semester and difference in people's time. Mm -hmm. uh, have, have there been conversations no, about sort of how the streamlined process might help sort of align ourselves better with peer well, the deans seem to like it this way, and they like having, you know, control over the review. Because in those schools, I don't know that there's, like, we have the reviews, um, the ratings, we have it all, you know, are saved, and we can go back and see what people did. And there, you know, we don't have any, anything saved as to what the readers say about students' presentation. They just have approved it. I guess that's their theory. They haven't said they want to change that at all. Is there a feedback process or something from the you know from the student to see how this process is working for them? You know, if there are any discussion of that kind. No, no. <laughs> They're so happy. <laughs> two different platforms. Uh, right now the dissertation progress reporting is on uh, Oracle uh, database and the front end is a mod a little older application. Whereas ONOR is uh, the database's file maker and the front end is a Ruby on Rails. So we want to merge that together. Uh, so the current technology that we are using in our, in our group is Ruby and Rails. So it will be built with a BAT framework and um, taking some JavaScript. So we can actually uh, I don't know, we can, is it okay to show them what we have? Like, okay. <laughs> we have a new application called Dissertation Progress Reporting and Submission. We are still working on that one, which includes both the DPR part as well as the ONOR part. Okay, any other
think to really appreciate this, you would have had to have seen the old one. It's so funny <laughs> and uh, difficult. And it's just so sweet. But I, I think it's a so I'm just taking the administrative role privileges here. Uh, so acting as a student. And you want to explain? Oh, yeah. So uh, when they log, so we are now impersonating as a student. So when a student logs in, he can see the information text, and then this can be proceeded to a dashboard. So this is how we have designed the new dashboard. It gives the student name and the DPR. So this is all the student data. So we didn't have much student data in the dashboard before. So we added more student data. And if there are two departments, like if the student is in like a combined program, both the departments will be seen here if there are more than two advisors. So as we said before, a student can have like one advisor if he's in one department. But, but if it's like a combined program, he'll have two advisor. So we'll be displaying all the details of those here. The dissertation title. So in this case, uh, if I'm saying, okay, a DPR, there are two types of students. One is like a new student and one is a continuing student. A new student is a person who's just admitted to candidacy. So it's any time throughout the year. Whenever he's admitted to candidacy, he's a new student and he gets a new DPR. So today, it's like the questions are same for every one. But in the new system which we'll be having for the new students, it's just one question which they have to answer, which they should be saying what they, they are planning to do for the entire year. And for a continuing student, they are already doing their works. So it's like a set of other questions which they have to answer on what they are working on. So this is like a continuing student because he has already some reports out there. So if you go to 2018-19, that is the current <coughs> report year which we are in now. So. We have changed all the pattern of the questions, everything, some yes or no questions so that the reporting becomes easy. We get, have the upload functionality for the student. So we are still working on these. It's not completed yet. So it looks like they're, the plan is that only, the, the only required fields are at the bottom? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But there will be some validations that we have to place where, you know, if the student is not putting anything in the non-required questions, right. then he should at least submit a, uh, a document. Yeah. Sure. Because there are some departments who doesn't answer these, but they upload like the they have reports. Process. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to upload something down there. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So you're from which department? MD&D. &D. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we are. Um, with the dissertation progress report, and then this would be expanded to uh, the ONOR process as well. Any other questions? You're glad that you finished your PhD? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm glad. I mean, there's something very sort of virtual of people printing out their dissertation. That's right. That's right. Be part of the office and it in. But having then done it for friends who have since moved away and already started jobs elsewhere, I'm happy to. <laughs> so you use the old DPR system too. Yeah, and this one's really easier. It's so clean and we'll be able to report off of it. Yeah, so yeah. Where there's no run back capability now. Because in some of the dissertation progress reports, what we see is the advisors don't act on things quickly or the DGS don't act on things quickly and that becomes very Hard if you don't have the reporting to know that, oh, these are the pending DPRs and uh, we have to close them incomplete, which is not the right way to do so, but it is what it is. And, and the other thing is there's um, emails that are generated at the students, mm -hmm. you know, 30 days late or the advisor, and there's automatic emails that will go out and remind them to go in. And it's, uh, we'll have a lot more control with the new system than we did over the old one. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you submitted your dissertation, have an outstanding DPR, you'll still get all of those emails for until graduation happens, you know. So we'll be able to end those um, so that it's not so annoying with the emails. And the beauty of all this is Dean Lynn Cooley is so on top of this that we meet with her monthly to give an update on what the progress is with this project. So uh, if you have any feedback, you know, go to the Dean's and the Registrar's office and see if we can accommodate those.
Anybody else? Any other questions? I think we have a few more goodies and uh, <laughs> Actually, I copied it from our senior project manager, Ted, when he brings these candies in all the meetings. <laughs> It eases out <laughs> the, the tension. You really got part of the good stuff, though. I just got kick out. <laughs> Thank you all for Thank attending. You.